Retrovirology is uh, first and foremost a uh, web-based uh, journal, uh, meaning that uh, we don't have a printed edition. Uh, it is uh, no different in terms of scientific stringency uh, as any other um, top-tier journals. Um, the um, editors and the editorial board are all uh, highly established individuals who have uh, lots and lots of experience and who uh, who have published um, um, prolifically in um, in traditional journals and in all sorts of uh, you know uh, high visibility uh, uh, fora. Um, so we tailor. We target our scientific pub, uh, publishing to um, the basic science of, of retroviruses. There is somewhat of an emphasis on human retroviruses uh, because those retroviruses uh, tend to have uh, a very significant disease impact. The journal uh, is in some ways um, focused more on human retroviruses, but we welcome uh, any sort of retrovirology studies uh, that is of excellent quality uh, in any kinds of uh, retroviruses. Uh, we also take a global view, so if you look at our editorial board, we have a, a very uh, good distribution uh, of representation from all parts of the world, and that is something that we are very proud of because the whole goal of open access publishing is to reach the world and, and we do have very, very good representation uh, that is geographically distributed across the globe. One of the things that I would emphasize to, to authors is that we have been around now in our third year. So initially when you consider uh, a new journal, um, your first concern is always whether the journal will be sustainable and whether the journal will be around for a while and whether the journal will, would be able to reach a certain uh, standard of excellence. So I think that we have, been, we have been able to demonstrate and in fact I think the evidence is, is quite strong that we have proven to the community that excellence, uh, visibility and impact is not an issue at retrovirology. So once you go beyond that, then I think you can see that the advantage of retrovirology is that anybody, you can talk about a scientist who is in Cuba, you can talk about a graduate student who might be in Kenya, you can talk about even your son and daughters, uh, your sons and daughters who might be in high school and doing a science project. Okay, uh, Virtually anybody who has access to the web, okay, can read your information and can benefit from your information. And so I think that is a tremendously powerful way of being able to, uh, to use your information and to use your knowledge uh, for the purposes of not just sharing with your colleagues, but sharing with the public at large. And I think one has to come to the conclusion that in the 21st century, as young people become uh, more uh, web knowledgeable and as the overall uh, you know, thirst for knowledge becomes greater across the world, um, that um, publishing in open access really makes a lot of sense because this is one way that you can in fact distribute that knowledge and give it to people, the public. Uh, and the public really is not, you know, sort of the ignorant masses at large. The public is, is uh, increasingly more and more sophisticated and increasingly more and more demanding of access, especially to research and scientific knowledge that is uh, publicly funded. So, so, so we have, I think, an opportunity and a responsibility uh, to, 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 to share. Uh, and, and open access and retrovirology and journals like retrovirology, I think, are the ways to go uh, in the 21st century. One of the major attractions to doing a biomed central journal uh, is the concept of open access. And uh, I am uh, of the persuasion that uh, open access is going to be sort of the, uh, the model that is going to drive the uh, the egalitarian distribution of scientific information.
And as we go towards uh, increasing globalization, and as we go towards uh, where um, you know marketing and industry and economies are linked, I think it's a no-brainer that we should also think of ways in which we can link scientific information so that everybody globally can in fact uh, share uh, in the development of knowledge. And so, so given that uh, BMC has a, uh, a first mover advantage uh, in the open access model, uh, it made a lot of sense that if one were to start an open access journal, that the one would certainly consider BMC first. Fundamentally, I think you have to believe in the concept that there should be no barriers to knowledge. So if you and I don't share that premise, then I don't believe okay, you can feel uh, the importance of publishing in open access. But once you understand that, in fact, sharing knowledge and allowing people uh, in all parts of the globe to, to have your information, okay, to, to in fact be able to build upon what you have found, uh, then I think you can really understand uh, why as an author um, you would want uh, to publish in open access. I'm always fond of uh, telling my colleagues that uh, who are we to be uh, presumptuous and to assume that the, the Einsteins and the Watsons and the Flemings uh, only exist uh, in developed uh, economies and in developed worlds. Uh, uh, potentially out there, uh, there are a number of young individuals uh, in countries uh, because of uh, just accidents of birth, that they don't happen to be born in developed economies. But those are the individuals who may very well uh, in the 21st century be the next Einstein, the next uh, Watson, the next Fleming. Uh, and, and we must reach those people. We must provide them with the opportunity for access. And that, I think, is the overriding factor why authors should embrace open access publishing and see it not only as a responsibility but as an incredible opportunity to reach the globe.